We're going to talk about reoccurring calendars. Now, I know that high levels working on a lot of different calendars, but one thing is trying to just get a specific date or a specific month and reoccurring. So I'm going to show you how you can create this calendar combined with a workflow that will work perfectly for you, or you may just decide that you want to just use the workflow. Let's jump inside. It looks like we made it. Let's get it on. We got it going. We're staying strong. Oh, it looks like we. It looks like we. Yeah, it looks like we made it. What I want to do is we're going to go into calendars. And you're going to want to create a round robin calendar. And when you create the round robin calendar, you can call it whatever you want to call it. In this particular case, we're going to do a network meeting that is the third Monday of every month. When you set up your calendar, you'll call it your meeting name, whatever you'd like. It's Monday. Let's say it's from six to seven. We want to do reoccurring meeting. But unfortunately, it doesn't give you the option to do it here. So you can actually do repeats every what day, week or month. It's a different day. So it's not every 30 days and it's a different week. So it's not weekly. And if it's monthly, you can't set a specific day unless your meeting is on the first of the month. If it's the third Monday of every month, or the first Monday of every month, then that begins to really mess up the scheduling. So month on a day, okay, what day? This just, it's not there yet. So that's why we're having to do this workaround. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this. You'll just turn off the reoccurring, set up your time for just Mondays at the time. And then what we're going to do is let's say it's a 60 minute meeting. So I'm going to set 60 minutes for the interval 60 minute meeting right here for the date range, I'm going to put nine days. And the reason why I'm doing nine days, and I'll show you here in just a second, is because of the date that we're falling into. Each month, you'll have to come in here and confirm that you have your date range correct based on that monthly. Let's just say you have this all the way on Mondays, but they can only schedule on the third that's really all you need to do is really just change the avail availability. Make sure it's a round robin. Do Monday, whatever the time it is. Set up a date range of nine. And I'm just going to do that for today. And I'll confirm that here in just a second. No customizations or anything like that. Oh, and for a network meeting, I would probably turn off allow reschedule. They can cancel. But that's one of the things I would do because you don't want them to try to reschedule and then try to get on that calendar. So let's look at this link. Let's go ahead. I'm going to just copy the link. Let me put this link in my browser and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right here, you can see it is going to be the third Monday of each month. If it's the third Monday of every month, then we need to do, let's just do this here. One, two, three, four, five. Let me, let me count this date. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What I'm going to do is let's go back over here. I'm going to go into my calendar. And once you get this set up to the specific day, it's fun. So I'm going to make this as 14 days is the minimal scheduling notice. So let's see if that worked. You're really basically playing with your days here. So I'm going to refresh this. And what we're wanting to do is see the 21st for August. And like I said, again, this is if you're wanting to use the calendar. You're basically saying, Events can be scheduled over the next so many days because I think I needed to add an extra day. So here we go. You see that 14 still shows. You can't get rid of that. So there's just no way around it. What we want to do is each week, this particular week right here is when you want to go in and set your day. So if you were to go on the 14th Monday, set your day reminder, then it would show only the 21st, the few days before. So every week you have to go into your calendar the week before your event, before you share the link and go in and change this. That's the only way that you can do that. And the best way to do that is just remind yourself the second Monday of every month to only set this. That's the limited days that they can schedule. 
So each week you'll have to come in here and adjust your calendar. That's the workaround in getting reoccurring until they can fix this. But let me show you something else with workflows that I think is going to really help you with only having to remember to come in and set up the availability. Again, we're still waiting for this reoccurring meeting to show. You could do repeats once, but if you look, it just, it, 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 this just doesn't work. And I know the problem that everybody's having. So until this is fixed, this is the best workaround is to go in and change the date range. So here is the workaround to this. There's two ways that you can do this. You have your calendar link, which is the link that you want to share to remind people to register the week before, depending on how much notice you want to give them. So the meeting is the third Monday. That'll be the 21st in August. So if it's the third Monday, or like I said, the second Monday, whatever it is, they're the first Monday or the fourth Monday, doesn't really matter. You want to set a reminder, let's say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, before that, so that way they can register for that specific day. So if you want them to go into the calendar, then we need to send them a reminder, reminding them that the network meeting is the 21st. Please register on our calendar. And then that will allow you to have your calendar booking workflow. And that's what I mean over here by if you're using the calendar, you want to create a booking workflow reminder for the registered appointments. We all do calendar reminders. My calendar reminders are always one, thanks for booking, you're in. Two is a 24-hour reminder, and then I do a one-hour reminder. It's real simple, real easy. In this workflow, what we're going to do is we're going to encourage them to register with our calendar link or you can have, let's say if you're using Zoom meeting or Google Meet meeting, whatever link that you have, you can do this one of two ways. You can do this to remind them to go to the calendar and register, or you can just ignore all that and just set this up to only remind them of your network meeting. So let me show you what I did. Now, there's two things that you can do to bring them into the monthly meeting. They can fill out a form or you can just tag them. I just put tag network. We could call it tag network meeting, what, whatever you want to call it. That's the fire that ignites the workflow. So again, a form or a tag. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send them a welcome email or a welcome text. Great. You are registered for the reminders to make sure that you get booked on the calendar. Maybe you have limited seats. Another great example of this is courses. If you're doing courses or classes or anything like that, you can use workflows as a class. I actually set up a class reminder every week on Saturday. The email goes out to remind them of their class every Monday. They have to register because limited seats are available. So we do that with a calendar booking flow and we do a seven day and they only can see that day based on the calendar day that we selected to only show. What we'll do is we'll send that welcome email. Great, you're in. Now we're going to add a wait one minute step. And then here's where the fun part begins. What we want to do is we want to add an event start date. So let's just go in here and let's just click on this so you can see what I did. I just looked for event start date. When you open up event start date, what this allows you to do is select a custom field a specific day and time or a specific day. We're going to do day and time because what we're going to do is we're going to remind them if our meeting is going to be on Monday the 21st, we want to set the reminder out maybe Thursday to make sure they get registered so we know who's showing up. You can set this date as just a reminder or you can do it as a reminder to register or just a link to your direct meeting. So we want to set this reminder because the calendar is the 21st is the day of the meeting. So I'm going to set this for Thursday the 17th and we can set this for 10 a.m. And I'll go ahead and save this and I'll put start event time August. So what's going to happen is they're going to wait and they're going to be in this event date at 10 a.m. We want to do is we want to add a wait step and we're going to add a wait step that says the event 
time and appointment. We set the event start time at 10 a.m. So one minute before 10 a.m., we're going to start sending this email. Then you set your email or your text reminder. So this could have your link to your calendar that we just set up, or it could have a link to your meeting that you just set up. You can do an email or a text. Now we have all of this set. Okay, we've got it done for August. Well, what do we do about the rest of the months? The great thing about this particular workflow is you only have to set up 12 months. <laughs> Where when we did our class workflow, let me show you, we had to do a class workflow for 52 weeks. So you can see this was a fun, awesome trigger going on. Now, one of the things that we added too was if that third Monday of the month is a holiday, you may want to add in an email and a text reminder, letting them know that, hey, this particular meeting is canceled or this particular meeting is not available due to the holiday. So you can add those in here as well. So let me show you how easy this is. Now what we're going to do is we want to copy from here down. And what we're going to do is we're going to select copy, copy all actions from here. And we want to scroll all the way to the bottom and make sure you hit copy here. Now, what we want to do now is the August meeting is set. Now let's schedule the September meeting. I just label September and then over here, let's go into September and the third Monday is going to be the 18th. So I want to send out the reminder on the 14th for the 18th meeting. We're going to hit save. I'm done. And you get the idea. I'm not going to do all 12 months, but let's go ahead and do one more. Copy all actions. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Paste here. So now we have August, September. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to October. And the third Monday is the 16th. So we'll set this reminder for the 12th, whatever date you want to set. But this is the reminder to remind them to select the calendar link that you've set up. And then if you'd like, once you get to the end of maybe one or two months before, you can set yourself a reminder, an internal reminder to go in and notify yourself, send yourself an email to notify yourself to go back in and adjust the dates. The other thing is we can do a go-to step is at the very end, I will say we're going to do a go-to from here all the way back to the top from here. And then guess what? Then you can set yourself that reminder two months before to go in and adjust that January, February, March dates for the current year. So all you'll do on the go-to step is just say you're going to select your green button and we want to go all the way back up to here, right here. And now you have your go-to step. Just make sure you set yourself a reminder because the August of the following year will be a different time and date. Of course, you don't have to do a go-to step. You can just come back in and readjust your yearly. What we did on the courses is they get a group reminder. In that link, they click on the link to the calendar. When they click on the link, they only see that Monday that's coming. They click on, they register. And now once they register, you have everybody in the workflow. I'm going to scroll down. We now have 115 people waiting for the next reminder. So they're waiting the one minute to get the reminder to go and register for that link to the URL. You don't have to do the calendar link if you're like, I don't want to mess with going in and up adjusting the dates. But I do like the calendar link because it does allow you to create the second workflow for the booking reminder. And then finally, if you just want to put in the link to your direct meeting, then you can do this. Just create your wait step, maybe one hour or 24 hours, and you can have them just click on to make sure that they have a link. You can do this a couple of different ways, but this is the best way when it comes to scheduling classes, network meetings reoccurring third, fourth, fifth, first, and second days by selecting email reminders to click on the calendar and then by selecting and editing your calendar date to show the availability based on the upcoming date.
And that's the three best steps to show you how to get this rolling when it comes to scheduling those reoccurring meetings, appointments, events that are on specific days, times, and setting up those workflow reminders. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Oh,